Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Nashville Civil Rights Veterans Association, and we have two members of that association with us to talk about the development of the uh, Nashville Civil Rights Association and uh, some of the other uh, ideas associated with the so-called sit-in uh, movement. And of course, let us uh, welcome you, uh, Brother Lillard, and uh, you, Professor McKissick, uh, to the uh, show this morning and tell you how delighted we are to have the two of you with us. Let's start off by having you, uh, uh, Leo, to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of your experiences. And then uh, Professor McKissick, during this first segment, will give us some information dealing with uh, her background, education, and then we'll, during that second segment, we'll get into uh, some of the ideas in reference to your participation in the movement. Let's talk about oh, it. Thank you, Dr. Haney, for having us on. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nashville Civil Rights Veterans Association, very proud of you mm -hmm. for maintaining this wonderful way to educate mm -hmm. and communicate with the Nashville people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a Nashvillian. Uh, I went to Carter Lawrence High School. A middle school in Cameron and Pearl High, and I went to attend the TSU. It was called A&I, Tennessee A&I, in those days, um, 1957 to 1961, and graduated. During that time, of course, I was a member of Kelly Miller's Fifth Church, uh, bapt baptized in 1954 in, in Kelly Miller Smith's First Baptist Church up on 8th Avenue, the old building. And of course, he was the center of a lot of the uh, movement in initial adult infrastructure, the adult organizations so naturally when it was it was it was it was known that we were preparing to demonstrate downtown uh, to, to continue what Greensboro North Carolina started called a sit-in I was extremely adamant about being part of that being a Nashvillian being a part of Kelly's church mm -hmm. and we continued that sit-in the entire winter of 60 right on through 61. Mm -hmm. How did you become involved and I think uh, <coughs> Professor McKissick we've had you uh, on an earlier show, and you talked about uh, being raised in Detroit. And talk about uh, how you became involved in the movement uh, once you arrived here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, yes, I'm originally from Detroit, mm -hmm. Michigan, and attended school uh, in, in that city, and mostly uh, went to white schools where I was uh, in, the, in the minority mm -hmm. and was interested in attending an, an HBU. Mm -hmm and somehow that led me to, to Nashville. And uh, upon coming to Nashville, I did attend Tennessee A&I mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. University, as Kwame uh, uh, stated. And uh, I was living in the city, this was 1961 mm -hmm. when I came, and uh, had watched things about the, what was going on in the South, but mm -hmm. really had made the connections between myself and what it really meant to be black in America till I came to Nashville and really was confronted with uh, adversity and, and saw Jim Crow uh, firsthand. Not to say that the North did not have mm -hmm. these problems, they were just not as uh, uh, openly, uh, you were just not openly conscious mm -hmm. of many things that were going on, especially as a young uh, teenager growing up in a middle class family. But I lived in, in the cities and when I came, it was right after the Freedom Rides had occurred and students had been expelled uh, from school and uh, some of the Freedom Riders were coming around in the student union trying to recruit students to continue what, what they had started in, in the uh, sit-in uh, demonstrations in, in the city and uh, uh, I volunteered mm -hmm. and found myself in, in the midst of it facing adversity mm -hmm. for the first time in my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. great, great civil rights movement in a real sense, the uh, getting ready, to, uh, trying to be prepared for the movement itself. Uh, when you think in terms of uh, your involvement in that movement, what, what really motivated you uh, over the last minute that we have during this uh, segment? Kelly Miller Smith's sermons on Sunday mm -hmm. was basically saying, uh, one motto was, how can you say you love Jesus who you've not seen, mm -hmm. hate your brother who you see every mm -hmm. day. And that resonated with me as a, as a, throughout, as a middle school kid, mm -hmm. when I was at Cameron, and he's constantly reminded us mm -hmm. that, that faith means you, you act. Mm -hmm. You don't just pray, you act with, uh, on, based on your faith. And that was his sermon. He was a social, active Christian. And that's what I heard from the pulpit at Kelly Miller Smith's church. And I believe 
basically that, that uh, it, it was time for us to act. And so when they was clear that Jim Lawson was teaching nonviolence and teaching the, and the, the tactics of Gandhi, mm -hmm. it was our time to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, was, it was, we had to say, if not now, then when? Mm -hmm. If not us, then who? Very that, good. Yes, that was John Lewis. And of course, let us uh, take this first commercial break, and we'll Kay. be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> 